in regard to these type of personalities saying that colleges and universities are leftist indoctrination camps mm -hmm. and giving giving that reason as why it would be better for some students to not go to college, not pursue an education and go to trade school instead. Do you think that is like a substantial enough problem? Um, I don't really I mean, I don't yeah. really think so. The number of people who are getting a full on education seems to be increasing every year regardless mm -hmm. of how much it's demonized by conservatives. So it doesn't seem like that that's having much of an effect. It's it's ultimately kind of like a futile push on their end. The smarter thing for conservatives to do would probably be um rather than to say you have to avoid education and academia altogether, instead they have to form a conservative pocket or a bubble within existing educational spheres, which is kind of what TPUSA is trying to do, because people are always going to keep going for an education. And education will always be left-leaning because conservative politics is anti-reality. So you, um, like, it, it, the educated have always been comparatively liberal for basically as long as public education has been a thing. Um, yeah, there just doesn't seem to be any getting around mm -hmm. that. Yes, I want to lean into that. Is there any cause for concern mainly that uh is campus conservatism not really an issue because as time marches forward the students are just going to become more liberal and conservative ideology on a college campus might just die out from the natural progress of time like the greatest threat from uh, to college campuses isn't college um campus conservatism but is rather um, conservative politicians uh, trying to legislate anti-constitutional, uh, anti-educational curriculum, like what we're seeing with the anti-CRT bills, where they're saying, you know, well, you can't teach this that makes people uncomfortable about their race. What the fuck does that mean? Teaching about slavery might make a white boy uncomfortable, but that doesn't mean you can't teach it. It's kind of important. Um, stuff like that is the bigger threat by far. I'll admit, I've never been too swayed by the threat of campus conservatism specifically, because it seems like they're kind of walking uphill with that one. Colleges mm -hmm. are always going to be fairly left-leaning. The real threat, I think, um, actually comes from the attempt to legislate against colleges from without, and I think more broadly, the attempt to, um, to make conservatism appealing to people before they had even the opportunity to go to college, a la Ben Shapiro, Rex SJW, 69 compilation, so on and so forth. Those videos are watched mostly by kids, you know, um, which is why Ben Shapiro keeps his aphorisms snappy and short. Uh, and if you put people in a position like that, um, where before they even get to college, they're being pulled over to sort of far-right uh, political blocks, I think the real worry there isn't so much that they um, they go to college and they make like the college more conservative. It's that they go to college, they shut up the entire time they're there, the way um, the way a lot of I suppose anti-gay Christians do in common society now. And then as soon as they're out of college, they get their education, use it to have a good, well-paying job, the decent degree in a well-to-do town, and then they go right back to that conservatism. I don't think college is sufficiently capable of moving people over to the left if they were already pulled to the right beforehand. So uh, what actions do you think are necessary to that you might want to implement if you are in charge of legislatures or school groups or whatever position you want to give yourself? What would you try and enact to push a more left-leaning agenda or halt any like anti-CRT things that you talked about? Well, I mean, I think that in this case, we have kind of a shared solution here potentially because I think the first thing that we need to do is really beef up our public school system. Um, the more effective our educational systems are, the more likely they are to confer an understanding of reality upon the people who, um, who attend them. Uh, also, um, sociology and um, philosophy courses should probably be mandatory in high school curriculum. It's very silly to me that they're not. Um, without a basic understanding of sociology, how can you possibly be expected to vote with any understanding 
of what's going on. I mean, you you can't even read basic data. What do you think you're doing? You're just sort of casting it based on whose name is funnier? It's nothing. You need to know this. Um, and philosophy, I think, just generally helps with the critical thinking skills. Um, that's a big step forward. There's also stuff to be said about homeschooling, um, because there is a pretty strong correlation, as I understand it, between homeschooling and highly religious, uh, conservative families. I don't think homeschooling should be made illegal. Um, I do think that public schooling should be incentivized heavily, though, uh, because homeschooling is a very effective way of trapping students, young people, and making it difficult for them to question the dogmatic words of their family. Uh, and uh, then y y you sort of really don't know anything about what they've been educated on beyond the fact that they can cross their T's, dot their I's, and do simple addition. Just not enough, I don't think. Um, a few other things, I imagine. So that's all important. I think, um, in addition, we should probably work on making school a little bit more fun. The more appealing it is to young people to participate in schooling, the less likely they are to reject it offhand for some ideological reason. Uh, abolishing homework is something that the Finns have done, the Finnish. Mm -hmm. It seems to work for them. Uh, it seems to have had a positive effect on their schooling, which seems counterintuitive, but it just seems homework doesn't really doesn't really do much to further a child's understanding, which is counterintuitive again, but I mean, if that's that. Um, and also, we need to address the inequality in the funding of schools. Most schools in the U.S. are funded by uh, property taxes, which means wealthy districts will have wealthy public schools, and poor districts will have poor public schools, which is absolutely insane. Um, I have no idea why that... Well, I do know why that is, of course. That's because wealthy families with more political power uh, pushed for that to be the case because they wanted their children to uh, benefit from a better education than the poor kids. We need to do away with that, though. Um, big time. And I think altogether, these actions, along with a holistic policy of school improvement, will go a very, very long way towards making anti-intellectualism less appealing in this country. So, uh, until we get uh, the public school funding, making, public, uh, making school uh, more fun, abolishing homework, uh, all those long-term goals, uh, what resources would a leftist or a leftist who has conservative friends and is trying to change their mind uh what might they seek out in your opinion are the best resources any books or videos or hmm well you know i'd, I'd love to take a stand and advocate for myself here um read, <laughs> read all that lovely theory uh god i I really think it's more about the mindset than it is about any specific thing you're reading, you know? I mean, you can read the, the, the most convincing argument in the world for policy X or Y, but if you're not going into it with the right mindset, it's almost meaningless, I think. Um, I guess what, what I would really recommend more than anything else is, a, um, is what's called the sociological mindset, which was one of the first things that I was taught um, when I went to university, which is um, to reject the the concept of societal um, essentialism. The idea that things just are the way they are is a fundamentally anti-intellectual view um, that just reinforces the status quo to into again. You can't fix any problems if you say that. I mean, you could look at carriages being pulled with square wheels and that could be your response to that. Nobody would have ever invented the proper wheel. It's ridiculous. So if you have that mindset, you start to question a lot of stuff, you know? Why did incarceration skyrocket during this time period, you know? Why does America have such a high recidivism rate? Conservatives don't want to answer these questions because the answer always trends towards police or towards um, prison reform. They don't want those things, so they teach you not to ask those questions. Why are black and white people uh, so um, disparate when it comes to economic outcomes, you know? Oh, well, it must be cultural differences. Well, what cultural differences? What does that even mean? What, some people just have a culture of poverty. Have you seen, like, if we're going that road, have you, like, seen rap and hip-hop? I don't think black people have a culture of poverty. In fact, the culture that comes out of black America seems to quite idealize wealth in the American dream. So what's going on here? But they train you not to ask these questions. 
And that's a huge problem. And it means that a lot of people just sort of remain eternally unreceptive to very basic structural analyses of, um, of this country. Mm -hmm. In summation, uh, knowing that the left doesn't have the financial backing or the organizational infrastructure that some of these campus conservative organizations have at the moment, uh, what is Vosch's prescription, the incremental steps that left-leaning college students can take to try and persuade or uh, build up momentum uh, against, uh, I guess, conservatism uh, on college campuses. Well, the first thing that you have to remember always is that um, aesthetics come first when you're trying to move people over. You should have a good argument, but aesthetics are far more likely to actually win people over. Which means that if you're talking with people you disagree with in a college setting, for fuck's sake, stay calm and don't be embarrassing. There's nothing wrong with being who you are, as long as, you know, who you are is not an unethical person. Uh, but um, there are certain types of behaviors that are going to do nothing but act as a lightning rod for conservative cringe content. Um, think of, oh god, think of Big Red or the Trigley Puff back from 2016 or whatever, you know? People like that. Now, I'm sure there's there's nothing at all wrong with these people fundamentally. I mean, Big Red was maybe a bit shouty, and the other one was, I don't know, also a little bit shouty. But beyond beyond that, there's really nothing wrong here besides the bad optics, which is always something that should be taken into consideration. Because when you're advocating for a political position, you have a responsibility to do it effectively. Otherwise, um, you could be doing quite a bit more harm than good. You know. The most effective way to undermine a movement is not to um, destroy it from without, uh, but to uh, uh, poorly defend it from within, you know? That's far more effective at tearing apart a movement. That's why some people on the right have ended up being more um, liabilities than anyone else, you know? Um, a good example would probably be, to an extent, the gun girl, you know? Caitlin <laughs> Bennett, um, who, you know, had her, her, you know, big fame, but apart from being personally embarrassing, and having sort of a checkered history. She's also a neo-Nazi. There were logs leaked of her and her organization. They're actual neo-Nazis. Mm -hmm. And now she's not accepted into the ranks of conservatism anymore. Uh, she's not really taken as seriously as she was by more mainstream outlets. And what's more, her continued existence gives us something to laugh at. And boy, do people laugh at her. She gets way more views on other people's videos now than she ever did on her own. People get hundreds of thousands, millions of views mocking her for her terrible arguments on college campuses. She became a liability to the right, and the right knows it, which is why they stopped associating with her. So it would be beneficial, what I'm drawing on, uh, to make sure that all of, I guess the college representatives of leftist ideology are very clear in what they stand for and make sure they don't have some of these uh, argumentative faux pas uh, that uh, the opposition can hold on to, point, at la point and laugh at, uh, and hold them up as a representative of the broader ideology. Yeah, here's what I want more than anything else, okay? If you want to be an advocate for left-leaning politics, okay, here is the um here's the most important thing that you can do, okay? Go join a canvassing org for a week or volunteer or something. Talk with regular human beings for a week, okay? And then in the future, anytime you are going to make a political statement that will be seen by others, think for a second. Is what I am about to say both understandable and reasonable to the quote average person? If some regular person was to hear what I'm saying right now, would I come off like some sort of lunatic ideologue? Would I come off unhinged or incoherent or whatever else? Or would I come off like a reasonable and salient advocate for my positions? And if you can reliably argue for your points in a way that does not make you completely repulsive to the average person, which should be easy if you're a left-leaning person, uh, then... Godspeed and have fun, you know? Um, go advocate to your heart's content. Just be careful with that stuff. You never know when you're going to end up on a YouTube video.